Braille or blood pressure kit. Comes with electronics enclosure. Uh, it has an on off switch on the back. It has a port for headphones in case the instructor would like to listen along with the student as they're doing this. And the pulse band. The pulse band I'm going to go ahead and connect up. And I'm going to turn the device on. I am going to go into the admin menu. Inside of the admin menu, I want to set the edit test values. I press the top button. I'm going to set it for the highest volume to make it easier to have the student initially hear this. And I'm going to set the rates to the systolic to 120, the diastolic to 80, heart rates at 60, and the volume again is at 9, the maximum and no auscultation gap set. I press the save button and I hit the right arrow button and I'm going to go to edit test value 2 screen. I'm going to set the systolic to 120, the diastolic to 80, pulse rate at 60 and the volume again at 9 but this time I am going to set the auscultation gap and then I'm going to press the save button on that as well. Then I press back to return to the admin main menu. Uh, I want to calibrate the gauge so I know exactly when it's at 120. The machine knows it's at 120 and it will become apparent here shortly. So I press the calibrate gauge button and I pump up the system until our gauge reads 120 millimeters of mercury. Okay, I slowly release the pressure till it's directly on 120. And then I press the calibrate button and the save button. Now I'm going to press the main menu button. and I'm going to go directly into the test screen. Okay, place the armband onto the subject or mannequin. It's fine. We place the pulse band on and we are going to go ahead and demonstrate some sounds. I have a speaker, amplified speaker, connected to the unit now through the headset port with a standard three and a half millimeter audio connector. And I have it on tests and we're going to check pressure one. So you can feel for a pulse right now, and it is going to have a pulse until you pump up above systolic. So I'm going to start pumping up. So I no longer feel a pulse, so I know I'm above systolic. And I'm just going to start lowering it at about 2.5 millimeters of mercury per second until I hear the first Kardikoff sound and I feel the pulse. So I feel it now at 120. This is Kordakoff 1 sound. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the pressure till we get below 110. The, the Kordakoff 2 sound starts now. It's a slightly longer swoosh sound. Okay, I'm going to decrease the pressure some more to get below 100. And then Kordakoff 3 sound starts now. It's more like Kordakoff 1. It's just not as loud. And then finally the Kordakoff 4 sound. It's even more muted. It's about the same as 3, just slightly more muted. And I can still feel the pulse. Once we get below diastolic, I can still feel the pulse. But the Kordakoff sound goes away. So I know this one was 120 over 80 and there was no auscultation gap. Okay, next I'd like to demonstrate the check pressure two that we set up. So I'm gonna tap the next button. Now we're on the, the test two or the check pressure two. Same thing, I'm gonna pump it up till I no longer feel the pulse. Okay, I no longer feel the pulse, so I know I'm above systolic. I'm gonna start lowering the pressure Okay, I can feel the pulse. 
I can hear the chord of cough in one song, and that occurred at 120. I'm going to start lowering it. Here's chord of cough two song. I still feel the pulse. And at 102, okay, I still feel the pulse, but notice the sound went away. We are now in the auscultation gap. Okay, I lowered it until we're now at 97, and the Kortikoff 3 sound is now playing. And I lower it a little bit more, and the Kortikoff 4 sounds. And once the sound goes away, that's the diastolic, and that's at 80. So I know this reading, we got 120 over 80, and it had an auscultation gap in it at 102.5 to 97.5. I'd like to show uh, some troubleshooting tips um, on the particular blood pressure simulator. Uh, on the back side of the cuff, we have this felt area here, and you can actually palpate for the speaker. And on this particular model, we made it so you can see that speaker quite easily. On the bottom of the speaker towards the hose, you can actually feel there's a little piece of plastic that comes down and that's actually what transmits the sound from the speaker out to this landing pad area for your stethoscope. So when you do place the arm onto the subject, that little piece of plastic that you just palpated for, you could place your stethoscope right there and then you can hear that sound just fine. Um, if anything else if you still are having difficulties hearing that sound, go ahead and you can place that speaker right up to your ear and then you should be able to hear that too. Just make sure that you're in between um, systolic and diastolic um, and you can do that by setting your edit test values to known values and then just make sure that you're in between it. Once you're in between the systolic and diastolic, you can certainly just hold that speaker up to your ear and hear it just fine.